Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to install this beautiful Della mini split system. This was the cheapest 110 volt mini split that I could find on Amazon, coming in at just over $550. As you just heard, this unit up here uh, just interrupted me and it's very loud. This one is so quiet. As you could hear at the introduction, I was talking and you could barely hear this in the background. But we're gonna show you from start to finish how to install this condenser and the head unit. This is a 110 volt system, very simple to install. So let's get right into it. All right guys, so here's what we got. This is the old AC unit. It's like from the 70s or earlier. We're gonna be doing our mini split right here. It's a pretty small uh, 12,000 BTU mini split. We're gonna be tapping into this power here, which is on its own circuit. Uh, this mini split does not require very much um, electricity at all. This was just a dedicated one for the AC itself. And then we'll show you outside here. So we're gonna be removing this. We're gonna be patching all of the shiplap or whatever these are called here, painting it to match, and then we're gonna have our mini split right here. All right, so we have made a huge mess here. Basically what we've done is we removed that old box. We attached all of our connections here, being as this is a dedicated outlet. We ran MC cable. I forgot to get a picture of this, but there was a stud here and a stud there. We just drilled two three quarter inch holes ran it through there, up here, and out the exterior. So this is a HOA and they wanted us to replace all of these boards so it looks like it was meant to be. Originally we were just gonna cover this and put a mini split condenser here, but we're just gonna put new boards and we're gonna paint this to match so everything will look really nice when it's done. So here's our head unit. Again, this is the Della, um, pretty much the cheapest mini split you can buy. We'll get this out of the box and then we'll take a look at that bracket on the back and see where our lines need to go down. Okay, so we have this centered on our wall. We have a stud here, but because this bracket is so small, we can't hit this other stud that's like way over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do screws into the stud here and we're actually gonna use anchors on this side. Now these are amazing, I love these anchors. They're very small, compact, and they only leave a little tiny notch if you ever have to remove them. So I'm gonna show you how easy these are to install in just a second. So once you have your mark made, you simply just put the tip of this on it, tap it in, and that's it. And then once you put the um, screw in, this is like a, a beak and it opens up and this is able to hold 70 pounds per anchor, which is really fantastic. Perfect. So here's where we're at guys. So we've got all of this patched. We are just about ready for the texture. However, we are going to make an additional hole right here. And that's gonna go all the way through the building to the exterior. It's gonna be like a two inch hole for a line set. So we've got our head unit mounted here. The line set's gonna go into the wall, down and out right here, just above where our disconnect is. That's gonna give us a nice perfect spot there to go right into that um, outside condensing unit. I'll show you the outside real quick. Started raining out here. This turned out really nice. We're gonna caulk the sides, paint this to match, and then we're gonna get our disconnect put in. All right, so we just drilled our hole. So that's gonna be for our line set. And we used a pretty small, size i think it's two and a quarter because all we have to go through that hole is these two lines our drain tube and our communication wire now i love the fact that these are separate that's going to make this way easier 
to run through that wall. Basically, we're gonna leave enough to make our connection to our air handler that way and down and straight out. So our disconnect's gonna be there and our line set will come out here and connect to our unit. All right, so we're gonna start by fishing this line up. See if we can receive it on the other end here. Oh, 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 oh bro. So easy. Oh my goodness. Both of these are extremely easy. Pretty hard to kink, so you definitely don't want to bend it too aggressively because you can get a kink, but it's very hard to do. So for this to be a professional installation, um, what we're actually going to do is we're going to feed this up, feed it through into that hole, and then we're going to cut these lines and reflare them. Um, the alternative is you could either leave it coiled outside or you could leave it coiled up in this wall to keep it hidden, but you risk somebody potentially running a screw into your line set, and I want to avoid that. All right, so we're pretty much where we need to be here. So we're gonna get it past this lip, and we're gonna start bending it out of this hole. Obviously this process is a lot easier with two people, but you can do it. By yourself all right so we've got both of our lines measured out here um, from the center of this I measured each of these so that they match right here got our drain and our communication wire and everything goes through there excellent so we'll just do a cap here patch that we'll get the texture rematched and out here we just have some excess so we're going to use our flare tool now you can do this with a manual flare tool but i didn't have my manual one today so we're just going to use our power flare tool i have a separate video that shows how to use the manual husky flare tool and it's extremely easy to use so first of all what we're going to do is we're going to hang these uh, little hooks right here on those top brackets slide it down as you can see those will grab and then what i usually do is i'll take like a piece of a roll of duct tape and shove it right here they also make a bracket that you can get that holds this off of the wall but i've never really seen that to be necessary so i'm just going to grab a roll of tape and keep it pushed up off the wall now we have access so i'm going to reach up in here got our drain tube so this is very easy going to twist until these two little grooves slide over those. You got to twist it pretty good to get it all the way on, but that's good to go. So from the other side, we're going to pull the slack out of this real quick. All right, so we got all the slack out of our drain line there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pull the refrigerant lines down. We have some room to work with now we're going to use a torque wrench and we're going to use nylog blue for this uh, you don't have to have either of those you can just tighten these um, and you'll be totally fine but it's an extra layer of um, security there now we want to take these caps off and there should be nitrogen inside of here so if you don't have nitrogen come out you may have gotten a defective unit so let's go ahead and crack this and hopefully we hear some hissing. Come on. There we go. Very good. So we're just going to let that bleed off. Meanwhile, we're going to open this guy. So we're going to feed this up through here. And we're going to make our connections inside of this unit. And as you can see, there's four lugs. This is our ground. And then we have these three. So this is L2 right here is white. L1 is black and S is red. So we're just gonna match these up. All right, so we got L1, L2, S, and ground all connected. And then our little strain relief is holding there. All right, so we're gonna tighten our refrigerant lines. Now on page eight of the install guide, 
we have um, this is in Newton meters and the pipe size is millimeters so 6.35 is a quarter inch line which is our small one and 9.52 is the 3 8 so for the small line here we're gonna do 14 foot pounds and then for the big 3 8 line we're gonna do 30 foot pounds what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the nylock blue on this part of the flare we're not gonna put it on the threads just on the cone right here. And just for reference, this can be used on uh, any type of refrigerant. It will not mess up if you get some in the line, so it's totally fine. Okay, so same thing, take our nylog going to put it on the cone part right here. Spread that around a little bit. This is actually an advantage to using a just regular adjustable is you can feel it. Sometimes I feel like with a torque wrench it just seems way too tight and I don't care for it but I try and do what the install guide says I think that's close enough I like it so now that these are tight what we're gonna do is I make sure we're gonna kind of straighten this out but before we do that we're gonna feed this over and you don't want to have an excessive amount of this because it takes up extra space so our insulation stops right here. So we're just gonna go a little bit past that. We just wanna make sure that none of these pipes are ever exposed to ambient air because they can leak condensate water and you can have water streaming down your, your unit and you definitely don't want that. All right, so we've got all of this taped up. Everything is sealed so no um, air can get to it. We're gonna straighten this out and push it up being as these lines are flexible and we should be able to permanently attach this and we'll take our arteri towels out. Come on, Terry. Oh, jeez. It's lacking texting your girlfriend. Uh, now, what we're gonna do is just clip it in and it should lock. Show them how to do it. More, more. I have to push this in some more. <clears throat> All right, unit clipped in. Um, I had some problems with this left side, but you'll notice now that our spacing is equal. I really like the uh, matte finish of this. It looks pretty sweet. So I'm gonna finish up the drywall here, get this painted and completely finished. Terry is working on our Rector Seal wall mount kit. So the way this works is this one will attach into our studs, which we have marked one there, one there. And then the bracket will actually slide onto that right there. And then you can adjust this anywhere you want. As long as two of these are hitting studs, that's really the main thing. So we'll show you what that looks like once it's all installed. So we've got one stud here, one stud right behind that bracket, and these three are just going into the, uh, the plywood behind there, but this is plenty well supported. And we're at the right distance. We're just under 19 inches is our separation from these two pads. So we're just about ready to set this condensing unit. All right, look at this beaut. So the great thing about this Rector Seal um, kit is that it comes with uh, these bushings pre-installed with the nut already installed. So literally all you have to do is line it up and thread your bolts in that come with the kit and you're golden. Ready? Yes. All right, so we've got our quarter inch line cut to the proper length here. And as we said before, we're gonna be using the uh, 
the Navac flare tool. This is a really easy tool to use. So we're gonna put this to where the this plate will stop this tube where we want it. I'll rotate this. It's pointed down like this. Simply slide this tool up in until it locks like that. Press this down and press the button. And it's as simple as that. Pop this out. And as you can see, we've got a beautiful flare. So we're gonna go ahead and get our this guy taken off just to make sure everything fits good here. Beautiful. And we'll do the same for this one. So we'll take this off. And from the back side here, I'm just gonna eyeball this to see where we need it. I'm gonna cut it right here. Just like that. Now we're going to take this back, slide this all the way in, lock it in place. This tool goes all the way up to 7 8 squares, I believe. As you can see, beautiful flare. It rounded that out nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and go and get our uh, nylog and we'll get these permanently attached. All right, so for our electrical, we're gonna take this piece off here. So we're gonna come straight out of this and we're gonna go into the side of our box. So we're getting our liquid tight connectors put on and then we're just gonna feed the wire through that conduit. And it's just this, uh, it's already protected and then we're going through conduit as well. All right, so we're working on getting our vacuum pulled on this. One of the last things we're gonna do here. So this unit just has one service port. So we're gonna remove this uh, Schrader core. This is part of our Apion tool. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna push until you hear that click. And that means that that Schrader core is locked into place and it should stay in this tool. No, it didn't. So we're just gonna set it up here. If you push hard enough, it will lock into this tool. You see that little um, opening there. But anyways, I'm gonna leave that off. This is a 5 16 Some mini splits are quarter inch, like a standard residential system, but a lot of them are 5 16 which is the pink Apion tool. All right, so now what we've done is we've attached this fitting that comes with the field piece to this part of the service core. Both of these have core depressors, so it doesn't matter if there's a valve core. And then we have this fitting that I bought separately with a valve. So once we um, are done pulling our vacuum and we're ready to let the refrigerant in, we can isolate this to prevent refrigerant from going in here. These are okay to see refrigerant, but if you wanna be on the safe side, you can put one of these. So that's just what I'm doing for instructional purposes. Um, and then we're gonna have our true blue hose right here and we'll attach that to our half inch port on our Navac 4 CFM vacuum pump. So let's get this running and see how quickly we can pull down this system. All right, so it's nine o'clock, just for reference, we're gonna turn this on. As you can see, we've got a soft start, which utilizes this battery and allows it to run for 60 minutes total. So really nice uh, pump, I love this pump. So our half inch port is going through here directly to our core removal tool. In just a minute, we're gonna open this up. 
notice the pitch change, power on our micron gauge, Let's see where we're at. Again, we just started this, it's 9.09. .09. We're gonna give this about uh, five minutes or so, see where we're at, do our decay test, and then we'll let the refrigerant in. All right, so it's been uh, five minutes. We're at 82 microns on our field piece MG44. We're gonna let this run for a couple more minutes and then we're gonna do our decay test. And then we'll show you how to let this refrigerant that comes pre-charged in this unit into the whole system. And then once our electrical is done, we'll be ready to start this bad boy up. All right, so as you can see, we're down to 57 microns. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna leave this open but we're going to isolate this from the rest of the system. So now this vacuum pump is not doing anything. We're just gonna do our decay test. And as long as we don't rise above 500 microns, we are perfect, good to go. So we're at 103. So let's let this sit for five minutes. It's 919, so at 924, we're going to check this, make sure we're not above 500. So we crept up to like 165. I figured I'd just uh, turn it back on for another maybe five minutes. We got it down to 67 and we're isolated and uh, we're holding. And then in the meantime, you can take these caps off and uh, they give you an Allen wrench, but I seem to have misplaced the Allen wrench for whatever reason. So just for reference, this is a five millimeter Allen key and it fits on both of these. It's not the same one as a standard residential system. So as soon as it reaches 935, um, I don't even think there's any reason to wait. We're sitting at 77, we're well below that 500 mark. So we're just gonna go ahead and open both of these fully. You can hear that refrigerant. Until it stops and that's it. Do the same on the liquid side. Until it stops and that's it. So we're gonna take our two caps Throw these back on, tighten those up. Okay, so since we are still isolated here, we're gonna go ahead and remove our true blue hose. And we're gonna go ahead and get our valve core put back in. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just set this inside of our tool securely so it's not gonna go anywhere. We're gonna feed this into the tool. Thread this on. Now when we open this, it's going to push this out, as you'll see, that pressure is pushing on it. And push it in. Sometimes I can do this with one hand. So we're gonna push in with one hand. We're gonna turn this and you'll notice, okay, we got resistance. So our core is in. Now, instead of taking all of this off at once, what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this, remove this slowly. So we've got no pressure on that. Now we're just gonna slowly open this one to make sure that our valve core is working. So now we are completely off of the pressure. We can go ahead and take our Micon gauge off and our freighter core removal tool. So we're gonna go ahead and put our cap back on. I'm not concerned about checking the refrigerant on this. It's pre-charged for up to the 15 feet line set. Um, some people say there's a minimum as far as um, what the smallest line set you need, you can possibly have without having issues. I did one where it was literally directly out of the wall into the, the condenser and I haven't had any issues with it. Um, but this one is about a pit, probably six foot line set. So I think we'll be totally fine. And I'm not even worried about that. As long as we're pulling heat here and everything is working good, we're gonna leave it be. So the last thing we're gonna do is hook up our electrical 
and this is very easy. It's a 110 system again. So our main power comes in from the building. I'll show you the inside of this so you know how it works with a 110 system. Our conduit comes up and over into the bottom of this box and then our communication cable runs right here. All right, so here's our disconnect. So we've got our main power coming in through the building here with our connector. Then we have our liquid tight here that goes up and into this box. So this is our uh, 110 main power. This is our communication that goes up to our head unit. Now, uh, this is very similar to wiring up a 220. We're basically just taking this disconnect and we're connecting our two lines. These two are line. And when we plug that disconnect, it connects it to the two line uh, loads in the middle. So this is our neutral and you can see it says line. So one, it doesn't matter. Black can go here or it can go here as long as they match on both sides. So we've got neutral line here, power line here, then our load uh, power here and our load neutral here. So everything is complete here. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this guy back on. And then the last thing we're gonna do is just wire this in. All right, so this is our communication wire and it's just gonna be attaching right here into this second hole. And this is what's called a strain relief connector and it completely seals any water or anything from getting in here. So as long as we're on the black piece. I just wanted to show you how these work. So we slid over this nut, this piece, then this slides on. And when you crank this down, it tightens up over that um, insulation and creates a really nice tight seal. So once we have this on, we'll give this a good snug and make sure that everything's nice and tight. All right. So that's what it'll look like when it's all said and done. So on the back of our panel for this unit, we can see these are the four connections that we have. And as you can see, L1 and L2, they have two connections. So from power, black is gonna go to L1, white is gonna go to L2, ground is gonna go to ground. And from the indoor communication that has four strands, black is gonna go to L1, white to L2, red to S, and ground to ground. So it's as basic as that for the 110 unit. So let's get this wired up and we'll get this baby started. Now for the wiring, this is our communication wire. So black is L1, that's our main power. Neutral is L2. Red is the signal wire and green is ground. All right, guys and gals, got everything wired in. So we have these two covers here. We've got our two blacks on one, two whites on L2, red goes to S, and green goes to ground. Now there's actually eight lugs here, but you can use um, either of these. They all go to the same thing. So this is ground, S, L2, and L1. So one thing I love about this unit is that some other ones, this is all contained and this is attached to it and it's kind of a pain to work with whereas this one just has this nice cover and i love that about this unit um, makes it really easy to use and uh, we'll just throw these screws back in and we'll get our power turned on and see what she does all right guys moment of truth Feel some nice cool air coming out already. Show you what it's doing out here on the outside. We're in the process of getting this old furnace taken out. We're gonna patch this. And as you can see where our hole was, looks really nice. Everything turned out uh, super good. Oh yeah. Very quiet, pulling some heat. Once this unit up here turns off, you'll be able to tell how quiet this unit is. So you can hear this unit running ever so slightly. It is amazingly quiet, pulling a lot of heat out and we are blowing icicles out of the inside unit. We've already got condensate water coming out of our tube here. 
got some sweat coming off of this. It's ice cold, so it's doing the job. These are our finished connections here. And uh, we got this sealed up inside here. Everything turned out really nice. Got our disconnect. And this install is complete. Our uh, siding turned out really nice, matches perfectly. And uh, the customer is gonna be really happy with this unit. So I wanted to show you this other system that's over two doors down from where we're at. So they got in trouble. They didn't replace the siding on this one. They had to take it back off, fix the siding, put it back on and check this out. Super kinked. And this system is still running. This is cold. Somehow it's letting enough refrigerant pass that it's still running, but that is not good. And uh, they'll probably have issues with this system. As you can see, ours looks much nicer and uh, much cleaner install. All right, guys, so here's our finished product. Blowing nice and cold air. And uh, we've tested out the heating as well, uh, just to make sure everything is working good here. This also has a swing feature, both left and right and up and down. So that's what these two buttons are for here. The controls are very easy to use. You can go from Celsius to Fahrenheit uh, really easily, change your fan speed, um, some, some different controls here, but overall this remote is very easy to use. And the turbo mode, obviously, it'll go into full capacity and uh, go full blast. So really nice unit. Um, this doesn't come with a holder, but we're just going to leave it um, like that. And this install is complete. Well, guys, this install turned out so good. I was really happy with the final result. And it's amazing to me that this unit was less than $600. In my opinion, this Della mini split was one of the easiest installations. It was very similar to other mini split installations, but I did like a few features like the electrical cover that comes off separate from where the conduit goes in, as well as just how compact the 12,000 BTU condenser was. I hope you guys found this video informative if you're thinking about installing a Della mini split system in your home. As always, you can find this product in our video description or in our Amazon store. If you'd like to see my Cooper and Hunter mini split installation, check out this video right here and we're gonna walk you through how to install that unit and I'm sure you'll find that video helpful as well. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.